Hi, my name is Lena and I'm Pearl Snitting. Today I'm again on a floor, leading the floor life. If you're Russian, you will understand the joke. Um, I have almost everything that inspires me and my work right here on the floor, just spread out. You can see only parts of it. Um, what I wanted to do is to say, this channel is a hobby channel for now. We'll see how it goes, but knitting is my hobby. I am a designer uh, and proud of it. And I design uh, what I think would be a standout patterns, um, well fitting patterns. And I hope it will save you time and money when you work on them. And I hope you they're very intuitive for you. And I will improve them as I will read comments and feedback. And I listen to all of you guys and it, it, it inspires me. Uh, bad comments, good comments, negative comments, positive comments. Usually uh, all of it inspires me to either clarify something, to uh, uh, point out the obvious or not so obvious. First thing I wanna address is, I do not think that my, my patterns are perfect. Uh, far from it. Uh, I will point out still things that I'm working on. Um, why am I wearing this sweater again in this video? I will point that out too. I will tell you what inspired me. I will uh, mention uh, some other methods that inspired me. Um, a lot of people asked about coconut methods and I do have those books. They were my inspiration that started ages ago. And um, I will tell you what I like and what I don't like about the methods, why I decided to develop mine. Um, and they're not superior by any means. Um, I am just trying to reach out to you and give you something new. You might like it, you might not like it, but that's just, we'll see how it goes. I have no idea. Here, I'm just rambling. This is not the technical video. Technical videos uh, produced, they're in different playlists. Go check out my playlist, step-by-step -step videos that will give you construction of my sweaters. Um, the construction of my sweaters and pattern releases started with drop shoulder sweaters because part of it knit in uh, like this one. This was an inspiration for my other ones that I'll show you in a second. So this was an inspiration for drop shoulder sweaters, but I wanted them to be shaped differently and properly. Did I achieve it somewhat? I reduced the fabric here by shaping the uh, with the short rows all the way through to the bottom, the uh, sleeves, not in this specific model. This specific model actually has decreases here that you can't see to remove the fabric. So it actually fits better and there's not access of fabric. Do you prefer my, my sweater scrub? Yes, I do. This is just my body type, but you have um, uh, directions, not instructions, directions in the pattern to make it longer, to fit your body, anything that you want. Uh, what don't I like about this specific uh, construction, my, my drop shoulder sweaters? I do not like uh, one thing. Um, this is another drop shoulder example, okay? This is uh, not released. This is Nubia uh, original one, released. Um, you can find the pattern in my step uh, in my on my Ravelry and there is a step-by-step -step video tutorial. So this is the original one with different color there and I thought it was more exciting but I simplified the pattern because something sometimes I think something has to give and I would have to exclude something from the pattern. Would I write it up in a different way? Yes I would because I like that and it stands out and I really like it. So I would rewrite, write a new pattern uh, for for this because the the final design is actually this. This is the final Nubia. This this is what you will get when you when you work it when you knit it. This is exactly what you will get. This is a larger gauge. This is much smaller gauge. Um, what doesn't work in this pattern? Yes, the neckline is shaped properly, but this pattern because of the way it's constructed, the stitches are even on the back and the front. It creates a problem and I will point it out with a lot of other designs and designers. It doesn't offset the neckline, the neck, 
the neckline. It doesn't offset it. It um, usually, well, this is the wrong one because it actually offset. It usually creates a round neckline like this, okay? If you do not offset your neckline, it will be folded in half and it will be even. If you offset it, there will be less stitches at the back developing the dip that you want, the necessary extra stitches that you want for the front. Um, this is not offset neckline and it's almost even. It's just a cone shape, okay? So this is what it is. Um, with my drop shoulder sweaters, I do have a little fix for that and it's coming in future patterns. So as the patterns will be coming out, there will be tiny little uh, changes. I find new methods. The new one that will be coming out will have a new method of casting on stitches for the sleeve. Um, it will have some other improved things. But yes, I will still keep sometimes those raglan-like decreases here, uh, maybe even with short row shaping of the sleeves just to improve the fit. So this is my mission. This is what I stand for. But this is just a hobby so keep that in mind please um i am i am um i newbie at marketing obviously at uh, my youtube channel this is just me talking right now so and and venting and rambling and all of that stuff so the drop shoulder sweaters. I start writing patterns with drop shoulder sweaters and releasing them because it was easier, easier to start with, um, because it's very hard to write patterns and to record step-by-step -step videos um, and to be descriptive enough and not to give more than enough uh, information to confuse you guys. So the next one is a yoke sweater. I'm excited about it and I will release it and it will be absolutely amazing to see the difference. I don't know if you will like it or not, but I will put it out there as an information and we'll see how it goes. And maybe you will have suggestions on improvement of little parts, or you will tell me what you still don't like in the fit, maybe in the techniques, maybe in the description itself. Um, so those are the things that I'm concerned about. This one, yes, there will be improvements. So as you can see, this is the back, right? The back the number of stitches is identical to the front here. They had to be the same. I didn't think, sometimes I just keep like those little things and I don't think about them, but I didn't think about that I actually can do that. And then I will have to consider how much more it will complicate the pattern, right? So I sometimes it's give and take i can produce the perfect pattern but it will be 50 pages long would you want to deal with that probably not and if i will write it for fingering weight well guess what uh the first thing you will see is fingering weight and you will say oh no so i will try to manage both yes i will stick with fingering yarn because that's what i like but i like combining yarns and sometimes it produces decay or worsted weight if you combine a few surreal packets uh, a few more hair strands so i will work out with those things because i still like them and that's what i will do as far as fit goes and as far as yoke sweater go um let me let me let me just get to that point so why uh first let me address this the neckline i always talk about offset what does offset mean it means that when you cast on in the round stitches for your neckline stitches for your neckline you always cast them in a round it's it's it is what it is then you divide them in the half that's an equal equal parts can you work with it yes you can um would it create better fitting garment to a point but i wouldn't do that um yes i did in a few patterns of mine uh, but i would improve that because that will improve the fit this one why does it slide off the shoulder first the neckline is way too wide but i like that fit i like that editorial fit and sometimes i'm all for it but if i were to offset it and to cast on less stitches or allocate let's just be because when you cast them on, it's in the round. And then it's up to me to allocate more stitches for the back or less stitches for the back. The less stitches I'll allocate, the more it will sit close to the back. 
at the back and will not lower down just like every other pattern 99% of the patterns uh, are seamless knit and around patterns um, they are very low at the back so because these were too wide of a neckline and too low it sits it sits okay there because of the collar and all of that stuff but it sits lower than I want to and that's a flaw so let me point that out if I were to cast on less stitches it would have set here it would have been nicer this was a tryout I was just casting on and playing with stitches and playing with fit and seeing how this will work out and and working it uh, to this point helps because it, okay this is done in two days flat maybe less okay it's it's a quick work and it's a quick thing for me to see how the sweater will look uh, how the sleeves will stretch using this method and all of those things that I think about. So this is to address that I just think about it a lot more than I would produce the pattern, or uh, I, I have to make sure that it will fit more or less properly before I decide to write it up and produce the pattern. Um, so this is where I'm coming from. This is what I want you guys to understand. It's not, I am not fighting with Joneses. I am not, I am proud of designers that create really great designs. I'm not happy with the fit of those designs and I don't know how to yet to teach you how to adjust those without looking at the pattern, without thinking it through, without sometimes knitting the pattern. Um, I can point out what I don't like, but it's not easy to tell you how to fix it all without modifying the pattern or working with the pattern. I can look at it sometimes and tell you from the get-go, but each pattern is specific. So um, I will show you my vision and my goal through my designs. That's what I decided. So it will be a slower process, but you will see what I mean. And uh, meanwhile, I'll keep creating these videos if they will be helpful in any way to understand what basics you need to do, like, okay, allocate less stitches for the back. What do you do after that? Because you have to compensate. The At some point, your back and your front stitches have to be equal. How do you compensate for that? And our backs, if you look at the back, unless you're completely flat, it usually stands out, right? It's, it's not flat, you don't go flat. You have, um, I would hate to say a little hump. We all have a little hump it's curved right so when it's curved it's really amazing to start with less stitches and then in the first couple of rounds or rows if you work short rows make increases what i mean by that i hope it's obviously because right now this is just a neat cast i am not uh in my recording studio recording detailed things i will show it in the future it's uh, easier to edit it. And if I would edit, uh, add the pictures to this video, I would. If not, I will just release it as is. So let me show you this. This is the back of my sweater. Do you see this? These are the increases because I started with less stitches and then I needed to increase it so it will lay closer and cover my back. And then it will accommodate for the curve at the back. So if you take just that little part of the back, exclude the shoulders, exclude the front, exclude anything. Just look at that tiny little bit. It's this one, the same thing here, absolutely the same thing here. There are increases. It's not many. And I can tell you how I calculate it. If you would be interested, I take certain percentage and I take it off the front. Uh, I add it to the front and I subtract it from the back. And then I calculate the width of the shoulders, the width of your body, all of that. It, it flows. It has to flow. I have a lot of pages of Excel spreadsheets where I calculate it. It's insanity. I don't want to provide you with all of that information. And this is where I don't know how much detail do you want. Do you want every detail of how I, I constructed, that'll be a course on its own for probably a, which I would like to be paid, but um, because it will be a lot of time on my part to create the course, to do all of that. If you're interested, 
Jill uh, Walcott creates a really, really, really has a really great course. She taught me how to grade patterns, how to grade, and I am thankful to her forever. This was the best money spent ever. But everyone likes to be paid for their work. So this will be a lot of work on my part. This is a hobby. And I'm trying to reach people and to express what I feel about better fitting knits how i feel about it how i did it uh what i do so slowly i'll show you uh, i'll show it to you in my patterns and in my tutorials that's 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 what i would like to do because i don't know any other way of doing it easier way so the first thing first just those increases at the back make that difference and make the neckline uh lay a little higher at your neck covering that not like like that opening your whole neckline you know and constantly doing this am i happy doing this no do i like sometimes to do that sure why not it's fun but sometimes it gets annoying so sometimes you just want properly fit sweater uh that will just lay just 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 perfectly right on me and i will be able to wear a purse or something like that without uh the huge uh armhole here and a lot of fabric and all of those things. So while you're doing that, let me let me just show you this. This is my color work, right? This is the back and this is the front. So the burgundy after the trim in gray, the burgundy identifies one round, one round, it's one round that I work um, with uh, to shape the back this little part it's it's not enough it's actually it should be slightly deeper so um to shape the back neckline drop and some of the shoulders because i'm building that back neckline drop in short rows and then i'm going to the other side and doing well it's actually the older way this is the old way i have the newer way that does it, it this is not in one round but right now i do it in one round and in that one round because of the way that the back neckline uh, drop sh is shaped i have to uh, start working on the shoulder shaping so i make increases for the shoulder these are the techniques this is what i follow and then after all of that is done i go in the normal regular way it's just a lot more short rows from um, right front to the left front going through the back i just keep working short rows and making increases for the shoulders those are the techniques how do i make the shoulders uh increases different ways many different ways you can do it uh going from the back like like in this sweater you can just do it all in the back this is the back of the sweater and these are the increases and they go to the front you can do it this way you can do it in the fan way you can do it in structured three four ways you can um instead of making increases directly at the back when you offset the back and have to make the back stitches equal to the front you can add them at the shoulder level um, so there are so many uh, things that I've worked with and, and it's just to show you a little bit. So this is the, the shoulder shaping going in this way. And I didn't like the bubble. So no, it's not all perfect. And I'm trying different ways to understand how it works because I don't. I don't understand it all. And then this is another way that created more rounder but still i didn't like that little bump i'm looking at all of those things but this is another way um this is the back more stitches increased in two ways and this is the front so these are the things this is another way going like this like a saddle shoulder this is a yoke but this goes like a saddle shoulder and you have to be careful because sometimes the wrong increases create let me show you that what i'm talking about because um where is it here because i've done it and i know it and when i see it in different patterns i see it so this is the saddle shoulder sweater and if you see it let me just spread it out 
See how bubbly this is? This is way too many increases that stretch out the flat part going wider at this point. But to my point here in the previous video, I'm not sure if we'll be able to tell, but I make double increases at the very top to accommodate for the round shoulders, not straight. They're going in around double increases and then single increases to the bottom to shape the the sleeve as if it was set in sleeve. That's that's my point. So that's as far as that goes. And then um, back to this one. So then I would do a lot of short rows to build the neckline. And it results in basically if you fold it in half the right way, this is what it will be covering the back. But the back, let me let me stress it. I cannot stress it enough. So the back neckline, I will show it to you in some books uh, that inspired me. But the back neckline, if if it's not this one has this one has slightly little bit of uh, back neckline drop, but not enough. Too wide here. I would narrow it down. This is way too many stitches for the back. Way, way, way too many stitches for the back. So I would just uh, reduce the stitches. This was one of the earlier designs, still not published. Um, but if I didn't have it, it would have been straight like this, creating the little like fold like that. And I think it's not a proper fit. I am still working on it. Um, let me, just to kind of introduce you to the designing process. I'm not even talking sweaters at this point, right? I'm talking mittens, fingerless mitts. When I started the process, so these are just tryouts, these. This is the final thing. These are the final thing. The pattern is on Ravelry. If you're interested, uh, you don't have to buy it. Text me. I'll actually send it to you for free. I'll create a coupon. Um, what I did here, I was playing with the fit because I didn't like how some patterns pull um, on the finger here. So I've created this one and it was worked um just normal increases to the side so they just worked in different and i had to cut it to open because i didn't want to unravel it and then i roll a lot of stuff uh because well yarn expensive it's expensive sometimes the yarn is precious and expensive sometimes when you just play with it you play with it this was different increases done in different way and i kept wearing it and i didn't like how it was pulling here and i didn't like how the pattern it just it just wasn't right so I've created this one and this one was knit in a different way. This one was just a uh, simple um, put on hold, stitches on hold and then make increases and knit, knit it straight. I didn't like the pull here or pull here. And when you add stitches, it just doesn't feel right. I don't like when it's pulling, when it's, I, I like to be, to feel comfortable. So then there was this one, another try of the sideways that didn't work out because it just, it felt more right and better, but it just still wasn't right. And the finger is still not there. I mean, the thumb is still not there, but this already was like, no, I need more increases here. And then you can make increases from the middle going here, but that won't be enough uh, creating increases for the palm you have to make increases from here to here for the palm and then starting from here to here for the thumb, like drastic increases. So you will have that extra maneuvering in the hand. Then there was this one and I didn't like the shape of it quite, just to be honest. So I created this one, different increases. I was just playing with increases and I didn't like how tough it was here. And this felt better. Uh, as far as this, nothing was pulling. So it was an improvement. And then I went to this one. This one was another 
fail because something else didn't work right but it was close to okay i like this fit better and that created that and then this one was another fail because it just wasn't i thought that maybe it would be good to have that um, thumb part coming out straight too just like previous one in a slightly different way and it, it just it was too loose and you can tell like there's extra fabric here so you need those increases here going this way and this way this is just mitts um so i am i'm just trying to show that there's better shaping and versus thinking about producing and marketing patterns maybe we should think about uh, marketing better fit patterns or creating better fit or writing better patterns um speaking about better patterns so let's mention this i will create a separate video separate completely separate video on this book so this is coconut's method um there are some books that are iconic Let, let's just be honest you know elizabeth zimmerman um anything so uh i'm just trying to, to just think all right um barbara walker knitting from the top you know there are some iconic books that give you the basics that guide you through that are close and explain you the basics but then you can take it a little bit further and create a little bit better fit because this is still the the without this we would be nothing um then let me go back so this one Nora gone this is an icon the way she thinks about design so i started thinking about construction and how i can i've worked so many designs of Nora gone it's not funny. Some of them were so uncomfortable to wear that they were dumped, but they were great to work on. They were great to knit. They were great to experience just to see what else can I do to change the shape or to maybe just take this. It's just thinking outside the box. It's like Bristol Ivy is thinking outside the box. You can construct sweaters and and every other thing in so many different ways. Unfortunately, I'm not a shawl knitter. I'm like sweater cowls something like that shawls just not my thing but um that made me think outside the box would i need shawls yes i've worked on some shawls and and i've had a bunch of them do i wear them no i don't because they're uncomfortable to wear for me not my style not my thing but knitting them i've experienced some construction methods and uh, like stephen west shawls i mean they're amazing it's you have to be so creative to create that all of that it's a lot of work and and it's beautiful and fortunately you can work it you can enjoy it and you can wear it if shawl is your thing because that is amazing the techniques the 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 colors the everything it, there is it's it's easier it's easier to create a shawl than a sweater a better fitting sweater a shawl it's very manageable. You can do it. You can wrap it in every, in every which way, even if you didn't meet the gauge or whatever. Um, it's easier. That's what I'm saying. So, all right, my icons and what started this whole thing. There are a few books that stand out that pointed me in the right direction. And I will point out why some of this didn't work. So, Coconut's method. Um, as a Tricosa method. Um, this one, an icon. Isolde, uh, idol. Just these are all of the idols. Coconist method. Very close to Asa Tricosa method. Very, very close. I'm not going to show the whole book because just buy the book and read it. Uh, make some uh, sweaters out of it. Would I recommend it? Yes, I would. Would I change it? Yes, I would. Um, what worked and what didn't work for me. So I did make a few sweaters out of this book. Where are they? They're donated. Why? Um, the method, I don't like to put, uh, I, I do put stitches on hold here, obviously, but I try to cast it on already, ready to go on the needles. I don't like to put it on hold somewhere else on another yarn and pick it up then, um, then pick up stitches. Then it's all like, I, I don't like that. Um, am I a patterns easy? Probably not. They're as wicked as these. 
but these inspired me so and these let me know that there's better construction methods and better fit and that's what i liked about it so let me show you this um so coconuts method right um you work and i'll show you just a few pictures from here you work the back part and then you move to the front you connect it and then you work in a round so um, i don't know sometimes you would think is it seamless is it not seamless i don't know it's probably seamless but so there is a tiny little piece at the back and then you pick up stitches you pick up a lot of stitches they're like on hold they're put on hold they're picked up and you work them in parts and i work in parts my sweaters are working parts sometimes too uh with short rows but continuous um so i can't compare i mean really as far as technical difficulties go it's probably somewhere up there so you do all of that what would i change it's a good method it's a good method if you like it and you enjoy it it's a very good method resulting in this and this would be a good thing in my world with a few exceptions what doesn't work for me the increases at the shoulders right here are not drastic i need more increases uh to accommodate to accommodate for the shoulder standing out shoulder part uh, when it's less increases it pulls it pulls down it makes the yarn stretch if your yarn is stretchy you, you're okay uh, this yarn is pretty stretchy that's why i still kept the sweater it still stretches over my shoulders but it makes the neck uh, neckline chain gape um, and it makes this kind of scrunch here so that neckline is good to go in my book what i do not like about the back the back has the same stitches you need to cast on less stitches there and then probably like if it's dk weight uh go to six to eight stitches for like a small size somewhere somewhere where whereabouts and then on the next while you work that tiny little part that back part increase it on a few next rounds either it will be one round and there's no at all whatsoever um there's a little bit of back neck line drop but not really so this is in a straight line so what i don't like about it is that it's a straight line it won't fit right i want it to curve around my neckline back neckline so this is front and it's not deep shaping it's a shallow this is the back do you see that it's actually already curved accommodating for your back even as shallow as this is at the back it's already curved if it's if it were flat it lays like this and it creates that little bump that little fold at the back i want it to lay rounder at my back so it fits properly the shoulders build perfect but the back um, if i would i would with coconuts method and with acid tricosa method it, it's it's identical almost it's almost identical if you were to uh, look at Asis method well first let me address the same the same thing i'm gonna show it to you Asis sleeves i hope you can see this Asis sleeves are actually shaped really beautifully she makes double increase or something here but it's rounder and wider at the very top of the cap of the sleeve and then if you look at Asis method it's slightly different don't take me wrong it's slightly different she just eliminated a few steps so this is what it is but here it's still straight there is no back neck line drop built here so, so to create the curve so this is straight and it's all in one line so if you were to reduce a few stitches here and add them uh six eight stitches for small size maybe 12 stitches for larger size because it's slightly wider um for dk weight if you were to increase just slightly here 
that will make a drastic difference. It will create just a slight curve at the back, not the one that you create with short rows going because you're creating a cone shape that will stick out. This is just deliberately placed just at that small back part. Um, you're increasing those stitches and you're creating that back neckline drop that will curve it so it will it will perfectly lay at your back that so these two methods i highly highly recommend with a few tiny little changes these and i said doesn't build the front neckline as deep as i would have probably built it but these two are go for it change it up if you if you understood what i was saying change it up slightly and see if it works for you because if i were to work the sweater uh the coconut sweater like that i didn't know it at that point when i was doing it but if i were to do it like that that would have been the most comfortable sweater ever it was a v-neck line uh what's it called it was a v-neck line she gives you really good points on how to create stripes which way you want to do it on the, on some of the fit techniques uh all of that is great what i don't like even with um hold on let me just say uh it's called m i worked on m like that and i worked it in this version which i don't like because it's way too long of a straight line here and it it just capes so um i would prefer just to lay uh, more uh, yes i like both necks but it's just a slightly more curved just a little bit more short rows just just for that little little curve there so that's <coughs> what i need now this person is another icon of mine isolda is everything this book changed my world so Little Red in the City, when I read it, I was blown away because I thought, oh my gosh, why, why can't we use? And yes, a lot of magazines require you to use one, two, three, four sizes, which I don't understand and I don't want to understand. But um, look at this. These are like my patterns. They look like that because it's easy to see it in columns. This is why I just discarded uh, basically any software and I just create my, uh, I calculate everything in Excel. I create everything in Excel. It's easier for me to do that. I can fit only 10 sizes per uh, PDF. So I separated into two. There will be three coming out because I have 31 sizes, 31. Kids, 10 sizes for kids, 21 sizes for adults. Um, so this if you have that book uh first she has uh everything in this book from techniques uh sweaters i will have the same issue with yoke with uh worked in around sweaters uh with zolda that i have everywhere else it's the same thing not enough short rows not enough belt no back neckline drop um no offset of the neckline this is just to be specific for those people who question what are my methods? It's very hard to explain and I don't know how. I'm learning. So I hope this video will open up more possibilities or will explain more or you will understand more where I'm coming from. And I'm thinking that it will be easier to show you through my designs. Just be patient. Uh, they're coming. It's a hobby. I have a full-time job that I work 50, 60 hours a week. This is my limited time, but I give it my all so and everything i can do if i can create a technical video i would if i can edit this video and add more pictures and pretty it up i would but sometimes it's just not possible and i want to communicate with you guys and this is what i will do i will just show it to you like this um i will go into probably just review um individual um uh, patterns out of this book and compare them to Isis book. I have a few more and I will probably record a video on just going through all of my books. It'll probably will be a two hour thing, but I'll just go like, I have like socks, I have hats, I have sweaters, sweater design, um, a, a lot of books. And I've read a lot of books and I've worked from a lot of books. Um, I was interested in a lot of like uh, these things, you know, seamless knits, what will it give me? Nothing. 
um, there's no really good information. It's still the same fit. And I would go to Coconut's method for this. And I will always use little stitch markers and little helpers that Coconut's does because they're amazing. Uh, basic, really good stuff. So this one, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. If I were to correct those little things like this neckline is way 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 too large if that's your jam i would knit it will i wear it yes i would will i change some yes i would because with that large neckline comes that open back that that open back if you were to reduce stitches it will be like this you can still have a wider neckline but it will sit better at the back if you have those little increases it will allow for the curve at the back and if you shape the shoulders and this is way too too wide but this is my editorial fashion kind of look. This is what it is. All right. Um, basically, this is me answering to some questions, comments, feedback. Um, I do welcome it all. I read it all. Um, keep sending it my way, please. What I still wanted to mention as far, because I have a few more books here, so let me talk about it. There are brilliant people in this world that are not recognized. Distitch. Another Asa, um, A-S-A, Anastasia, Nastya, probably that's like Russian, uh, German, I don't know, somewhere. It's somewhere in those roots. Um, Asa Brill. Beautiful techniques. Like this, these books changed my world. I, when I read them, when I look at them, when I use them, I, I am blown away and I want to create patterns using these techniques. It's just not enough time. Like, where do I get the time? I need uh, five clones of me. Maybe then we will be, we will be talking. And then another separate video will be on another idol. I absolutely love, love, love Kate Davies. Love her to pieces. So I will talk about her designs. Um, that'll be a separate video. Um, this one, I will keep it at this level. I can see like 40 something minutes long. Um, I felt passionate about it. I thought that I would just get on camera, just lay down all of the designs that I still kept of mine. Uh, majority is mine. A lot of them got dumped. Um, I wanted to mention one more thing while I'm here. This is to answer I forgot who it was. Heather? I don't know. Um, this is to answer and to hello friends. Um, my patterns coming to Etsy. I'll try to upload them, uh, the PDFs today. I, I No one was buying them there, so I didn't think it was important, but um, obviously people are interested. One was bought recently, so I'll upload it there. Um, so you have it. All right. Marie Wallen, another idol. I don't know what I would do without her books or her techniques or this is um, philosopher's wool, philosopher's wool, I think, method of weaving in. So this is what I do. I uh, knit with both hands, uh, color work, uh, fair isles, and I wrap it. So each stitch is wrapped. More yarn used. Uh, a little thicker fabric but beautiful it just creates just a beautiful work so the uh, color choices were selected by my yarn shop um, nearby I mean I still have to drive but um, and ordered by Katie so at humble stitch in Newport PA uh, so she created she just ordered these colors for me and I wanted to work the yellow sweater for such a long time. I've worked on a few of them. A few of them got dumped because of the fit. So it's a lot of money. A lot of money. Um, this is the small size that got butchered up. So when you work it, it's straight lines uh, connected to the middle of the center going straight. So when you wear it, it's, uh, as I like to say, fashionable editorial, not functional look but the the sides will ride up because it needs to uh, to allow the space for the neckline as you wear it so did i do sticking yes i did a few times in my life it's not as scary but make sure you use the proper yarn 
if you're using uh, mohair, uh, superwash, anything like that, it's doable, you can do it. Be careful, sew it. Use sewing machine to secure like zigzags, something, but it'll create extra bulk and extra like waving. Uh, so be careful. Uh, you're better off with non-superwash, really woolly wool. Uh, this one is Jameson of Shetland. Um, so this one used to be that that design, the, the original design. What I did first, I sticked it because I do not, every, um, every pattern of Marie Wallens, I uh, change it up to knit in around. Sleeves were worked in around both at the same time then i cut into them and they were sewn here there's a seam and um sewn in here this is what i don't like i don't like those those things this is why i like seamless you try it on you see how it fits this one is kind of impossible to do the complaints that i uh, saw and heard from other um from other people is that uh, the trim you have to have a backing to it i have a double fabric here i picked up stitches i worked in seed stitch and then i turned and it was just flat and i sewed it to the backing so it will stay the right way before that i had to not enough that i cut the sticking but i had to cut cut the back neckline so it was uh flat going in i actually went in and i cut that part that was a huge chunk here that went to the front i had to cut a lot from the front it was like this much going forward so i cut all of that out literally just went with scissors i went nuts with scissors and i cut all around it and then as i did that it fit much better and I'm wearing it and I'm loving it, whether I wear it with the belt, without, I can sometimes just post pictures on Instagram or just include pictures in one of these videos of how I style it, if you would be interested in that. So this is my Marie Wallen stuff. Um, this is Yell. Um, I am happy with design now. I wasn't happy when it was finished for the same reasons. This I had to redo because the original one was just going, uh, even with the backing, with a little bit of that, um, what's it called, like, like the... It just doesn't come to my mind at this point. Uh, like um, ribbon, whatever it is. So it just wasn't working out for me so i had to cut that out i had to improve the shape of the neckline and i had to cut into the front because of that but overall um i i enjoy it i like the woolly wool i like the scratchiness of it i learned to love it over the years i didn't i preferred like uh, mohair soft surreal alpacas and superwash wool but now i like these things um i, I like the the feel of them i like how they water repellent uh they keep you warm without overheating you this it's amazing i love it love it love it um so that's that's basically what what it is and like all of the seams everything and um philosophers will i'll try to link that book below he has cds but it's all outdated so just buy a book you can find it on amazon literally for one cent i don't know why but in used books you can find it for nothing um but philosophers will has a really really great method if you wanna this is when i taught myself to knit english style and i'm fluent in both but this let me uh, work color work better in this way um all right so this is it for today um until next time i'll think about some other things uh, meanwhile i'll think about how do i want to describe the coconuts like i will just go into separate each uh, design out of this book I'll compare them to uh, Asa Tricosa uh, designs. And uh, I'll show you all my books at some point too, because that's what I like to dab in and read a lot, uh, whether it's in Russian or in English. I don't, I don't, I don't care, I don't mind. Um, either or, it's all beautiful information. I have even some of them like right there. Um, that's it for today. Uh, thank you guys for being so supportive. Uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, a lot 
because they inspire me, if they create passion in me, this passion just to want to show up on a camera and I don't want to, this is like a no-go for me. I held on for years just not to get on a camera. It's um, securities and all that, it's just not good with me. So thank you for all of your comments. I appreciate every single one of them. Thank you so, so much. Um, and uh, until next time, bye. Thank you.